for the said handicapped part in the military personnel board.
the same rules, with the exception that the minimum water quality for the service center is strictly is, is, is uh, 12,000 square feet. But for the same thing's purpose, they're asking for a reduction of 32,000 um, square feet. As I said, the planning commission to make their recommendations. Um, EPD or consulted on zoning review actually spotted as an issue potentially excessive um, acreage requirements in our business district that really continues in the meantime the petition has sought this thank Finally, point out that uh, on your website you have a summary of your comprehensive plan, um, and it states under economic development that uh, quote as a small, densely developed community with little or no room for new development, borough officials are charged with implementing innovative strategies that will retain and complement existing businesses. I don't think we're asking for a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of innovation involved here, but this will have a positive impact.
cleanliness that has now, as I come down that hill and I come home every day down that area, that has all been cleaned off. And it looks like a business now, not a job. I do not see that selling some cars there is going to make any difference to that location. Because I, the way I look at the front of the building, there's only a few spots for cars there, and the rest would be in the back, which nobody paid attention to that overgrown area anyway. Okay? Um, and I don't see that there's a traffic issue there. That has become a very calm area as you go through, and the neighbors let each other out of that area. So I don't see it becoming more congested with that speech. Thank you very much. Yes, Mike. Yes, uh, my name is Mike Cheeto. I live down on Station Street. And um, I'd like for you to vote uh, in favor of this. Um, Ruby and his family, his wife Alexa, are nothing but hardworking individuals. They're uh, committed to this community. Um, it's a prosperous business, a restaurant, and I'm sure um, the other one would be prosperous also. He's nothing but a hard worker. He's a living American. Sorry to clutter the record. I, I want to make one comment unless the historical record being accurate also to advise constantly. But Allegheny County uh, made comments on this amendment, and they often and usually make quite cogent comments. But in this case, there was a comment made by Allegheny County that perhaps when we originally set this in on acre, there was some methodical thought behind that, and that we should have some compelling reason to change that. From our own familiarity with our own borough and the history, it's apparent that there wasn't a specific thought about that a one acre was a rational number. Nor is a legislative matter. Does the board need to have a compelling reason? There's not a high standard for you. The, the standard for you to pass this ordinance is the same as any ordinance. Does it have a rational basis? If you believe it has a rational basis, you are empowered to change it. And it's not a zoning, this is not a variance for one individual. You can look at them as a sample of what would be allowed if the request they're making is granted. But if this is granted, it's a legislative request. We change the zoning ordinance such that any business that had the requisite acreage would be able to do it. So it's, it, it does benefit them, obviously, they're asking for it, but it's not a special favor or kind of a variance for one, one set of uh, folks. And as far as the, the performance standards beyond what they've already done, if this is passed, it is a conditional use, so they will have to file a conditional use application and come back and there's a site plan that has things that protect the rock buffers and how things are laid out on the property and all that sort of thing. So, that's All right. Um, we have a motion. Make a motion. Jason, okay, to approve it. No, you just, you just well, we can do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Society is, uh, I'm sorry, I'm speaking for the historic society. 
At any rate, the police department has been working with us quite well, and I'm very pleased with their response and their care, and I want to say thank you to them. If, if I may, Mary, it was technically a theft, not a robbery. There's a huge difference. <laughs> well, there are some things that I, don't gel. You know, I know. Robbery so, involves weapons. Something like so, that. It was but a anyway, theft. somebody walked off with the lady's purse, and she managed to get it back, but not the green stuff. I told you about the Cairo tickets. The company I work for paid for the tickets and the parking pass, and a virtual paid for the printing. So your $5 donation will be strictly a donation. And some of you there are already helping us anyway. Uh, that's not helpful. It brings me to probably the saddest thing uh, I've had to face in quite some time. Since April the 3rd, we have lost three key workers at the History Center. The most recent one is Lena Carosa. Lena lived in the building where shows are today, and their, their family ran the grocery store. She was everybody in Bluesville. She worked her way through college and became a secretary to, um, I always forget the name, the real estate people. <laughs> At any rate, she was ill exactly 36 hours. She's 94 years old, had been driving that day. But what was so important to the Historic Society, and this is what I want you all to see has to be planted. She had the sharpest mathematical mind I have ever known in my life. She sat and advised and read and studied every month I gave her a packet of information. All the money we spent, how we spent it, all the money that came in, how it came in. I wish a lot of us, men and women, were that sharp. I really do. I'm sorry, I'm dropping everything. Father came at her, at her funeral service, said one thing that really identifies her. She loves Bridgeville. You can put it in the past tense if you want. I choose not to. She loves Bridgeville. She always wants to keep Bridgeville a great, unique, little family town. And of course, pedestrian area develop more in the business district of Bridgeville. She doesn't want any speedways through town. She said that often. She wants this town to be our town, not anybody else's, our town. She wants to raise, have people raise their families, enjoy the town, enjoy all our wonderful restaurants, which we have the best around. Thank you. Uh, we have other businesses in town. And I can look at businessmen here, and you know full oh, well, you have really, really helped this town. She did, too. She really did. I wish you could have all heard her at the last three years at our board meetings. Preservation. Preservation. That was becoming her theme song. So, as a final thing, I just want you people to remember how much she cared for Bridgeville and how much she wants to preserve a lot of our very, very rich history. And it only will do if we all cooperate together. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
That's right, Jim Clausen. Well, they called him because I wasn't taking my car out. Right? He went to last, last night, my sister in law went on a fight with him. Uh, Catholic Church, she called the police. They said they can't do anything because they're Catholic Church property and they couldn't do anything. So she got in an argument. I started chasing the kids. I didn't do anything to them. Gee. But um, I found out three of the kids were from Carnegie. I know which one. These kids are like dogs in heat. Yeah. They're around every, you know. I, I know the ones you mean. I actually spoke to them last week. Okay. Yeah. And they're the same ones that jump on somebody's hood up on Ramsey on somebody's roof. Did you hear about that? No. They jumped on somebody's roof up at Ramsey and caved it in. No. So reported. You know. Do you remember what that was? The one on Ramsey? Ramsey? You I remember sure. hearing about it a couple months. A couple months, months ago. A month ago. A month and a half ago. Yeah, okay, but at least a month, two months. Ago. Yeah. So, you know, I'm getting a little perturbed, and uh, I know there's, I know you can't, you know, tell me off the street or anything, but, you know, maybe we should have a curfew. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Uh, let's go. Hello. Hello. I'm here to talk about the farmer's market. Like Lena Carosa, I have a investment here in Bridgeville and it is the fact that the town is a family town and we have a farmers market here and it's every Tuesday at four o'clock rain or shine and um, it supports 22 vendors and we need a lot more customers to come in down there so I need support from people in this room to help us put the word out on their Facebooks and emails and reminders every Tuesday for the people that you know, your neighbors and friends, to come down to the farmer's market. It's a volunteer situation through the Bridgeville Borough. They sponsor us. And um, we're doing what we need to do to make this a family town. So I need everybody's support and to pass the word. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody, any other visitors would like to speak before we move on? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, minutes. Motion of the Borough of Council regarding the minutes of May 11th, 2015, regular, mid regular meeting yeah, as submitted. So, Bruce yeah. and Bill Pelosi. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Motion of the Borough of Council regarding the minutes of June 8th, 2015, workshop meeting as submitted. So, Bruce and Bill Pelosi. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Motion to the Borough Council regarding the minutes of June 8, 2015, regular meeting as submitted. Jason and Bill Pelosi. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, zone text amended, amendment petition. Choose 2 LLC 112 Washington Avenue, proposed ordinance number 983. A zoning tax amended, amendment request submitted by Schuess 2 LLC. The petition seeks to amend the minimum lot size for auto sales in the B business district for property located at 112 Washington Avenue. Desirous of expanding the business to include auto sales, the petition seeks to amend Chapter 27, Section 903.39A to reduce the minimum lot size for vehicle sales from the current one acre requirement to three quarter acre, <coughs> 50,000 square feet. The request has been duly advertised. The public hearing was held on July 13th, 2015 to receive public comment. A review from the Office of, the, of Allegheny County Economic Development has been received. A uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding ordinance number 983, an ordinance amending zoning ordinance cha chapter 27, section 903.39A to provide a minimum lot area of 32,000 square feet, three quarters of acres for vehicle, rental, sales, and service. Motion by Bruce and Bill Clusey, and you said you wanted yes, to say something. I do have a brief, well, not too brief. First, it is my hope that all of you vote in favor of this. And it is my intention, if you send it to me, to sign it. Now, I'd like to read the letter that our solicitor was commenting on, the letter from the County of Allegheny. 
At the time the current zoning ordinance was written, the borough believed that a one acre, that one acre was the necessary minimum lot area for the sale and rental of vehicles for this application. A compelling reason to question the reasonableness of this requirement was not given. The existence of other non-conforming businesses should not be used as a justification for adopting this amendment if the intent is to eliminate smaller vehicle sales lots. The borough should evaluate the following issues when considering this request. Is reducing the size of all future potential vehicle sales lots consistent with the comprehensive plan? Can the conditional use requirements for the use be met with, one, with lots smaller than one acre? Will allowing the use on a smaller lot and subsequently the expansion of the business into the sales, sale of vehicles result in negative impacts to the corridor? If the borough finds there is a sound planning basis for amending the ordinance to allow the use on smaller lots, it should be considered whether additional requirements via conditional or special use exceptions proceedings are needed when a site is less than one acre. The choice to move from one acre to three quarters, Mr. Solicitor, is specifically for this individual. I know that any other three quarter acre could be used for auto sales now, as opposed to a one acre. But as the petitioner accurately pointed out, we have a number of vehicle sales lots that are smaller. I bring this up into the record because Allegheny County was mistaken on the first sentence. At the time the current zoning ordinance was written, the borough believed that a one acre was a necessary minimum lot area. I believe that they did not mean, that they did not believe that. And the question comes, did we believe, do we mean what our law says? And the answer is, no, I'm going to use two words here. Our zoning law, in many respects, is both arbitrary and capricious. And we run into these difficulties on a repeated and consistent basis. Mary talked about Lena Carosa and her love for this community, the small town that it is. The mix, the eclectic, if I can use that word, mix of residents and businesses that work so well together, the small town that we have. Our zoning ordinance, if you read it, you couldn't build this town under our zoning ordinance. If it weren't here, you couldn't build it. Our zoning ordinance is, I'll say it again, it's arbitrary. It is not that we thought 20 years ago, oh, car lots need to be one acre. It's, well, this is what you do. This is what goes into the, into, the, into the mix of a zoning ordinance. It doesn't fit Bridgeville. It didn't fit Bridgeville then. It doesn't fit Bridgeville now. Yes, we need to fix this. And we need to fix a lot of other things in our zoning ordinance. So that we allow our community to be the community that, that we have. That, that, it can, that, it can, that it can flourish as a small town with that mix of uses where people can walk down the street. So I'm hoping that this is going to pass, and I'm hoping that a, a number of other changes will also pass to make our business, our mixed area, much more attractive to the kind of development we want. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Pat. Any other comment? All right. All those in favor? All right. All right. All those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. And for a lot of, you know, just for the record, I think a lot of people up here, you know, very happy with what you're doing down in North Angles. Thank you. You're doing a great you job. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'll make it make people a job to drive past there. That's a bad thing to say. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thing. It should have been done 20 or 30 years ago. I wasn't here then. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Rock Salt Contract, 215 to 217, 216, uh, winter season.
bid to receive and open for rock salt for the 2015-2016 winter season by the Shea Club Purchasing Alliance. Uh, only one primary bid was submitted to uh, Cargill Incorporated in the amount of $62.29 per ton bulk delivery. Uh, the bid price is $3 per ton less than the previous season. A motion of the Borough Council awarding the rock salt contract for the 2015-2016 winter season to the lowest responsible bidder cargo in the amount of $69.29 per ton delivered. So Bruce and Jason, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Current estimate number two, 2015 point repair project. Motion of borough comments regarding the remittal of the current estimate number two, mm -hmm. 2015 point repair project to Soli construction in the amount of $40,012.10 for work completed to date. Uh, remarks um, estimate has been reviewed, reviewed by engineer sites. So move. Bruce a second. and Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Current estimate number 1-2015 CCTV project. Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding the renewal of current estimate number 1-2015 CCTV project to Insight Pipe Incorporated in the amount of $22,083.81 for work completed to date. Uh, estimate has been reviewed by engineer sites. So move. Second. All right, Jason and Bruce, and your comment. I'll comment on the point repairs and the CCTV. The way, the, the way it's presented is, and I understand it, it's a contractor's application for payment. Right. But we have, I have no idea as to what point repairs are done. Mm -hmm. Which which streets? Are we in there? Mm -hmm. Where then it was the location of the point repairs? Um, if you require that information, I can ask Joe to. Here's my here's why I'm bringing it up. It isn't. It isn't. I'm trying to add a bureaucratic piece to this. Okay. It, it, it's it's uh, telling the it's giving you the quantities um, that, the, that the contractor had utilized, but it's just not. Telling you where. So if you would like that, I can ask you. It's bigger than. Here's what I'm asking for without adding the administrative burden. Here's what I'm suggesting. We don't, and this goes back to November or December. We, what, what are the list of projects? Which ones did we just finish? How much inflow and infiltration are we going to prevent by what we just spent? Now, I'm not asking for some special report. I'm just pointing out that we don't know what the list was. We don't know what just got crossed off the list and got done. And we don't know what's left. Now, by, by saying that, I mean, I don't know. I think Joe and Gateway and you probably have that. We, we do have the, the total list. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can speak to that. Um, these point repair projects, are not, their, their sole intent is not to reduce that infiltration into mm -hmm. the lines. They're like you have potholes in your road. And I like to compare it to the roads because we can see those. So when we have what's called a level five defect, it means that the pipe is broken down, it's either collapsed or there's holes in it. So the sewage is getting out of the system. So right now under our own M plan, you're required to identify level five and structural defects and then correct them. Now that is just part of your own app. So those are the point repairs. Now, when you start getting into those planning type of things, which we talked about with the overall system capacity, where you have deficiencies, where you have backups, where you have info infiltration, that's a different part of your, your master plan as far as the repairs. So let's talk, go back to the road analysis. Um, you have potholes in the road, the road is failing, you can do things to patch the road prior to it. But if you do nothing, now you have to completely replace it. Um, we're in that mode with the o and to patch the holes in the road. Then the next phase becomes allocating funds 
to the <coughs> lining, which does do all of that. It replaces the pipe from inside the pipe. You don't, um, it, it reduces infiltration. And that's where you start to get into the planning. So right now, as part of your O&M, you are mandated um, by the consent order to make these repairs. You identify them with the CCTV, and then you correct them. Then the next phase becomes capital projects. And we've been doing capital projects as well. Mm -hmm. Right, Lord? Yeah, and some, some yeah. intermixed in this process. We also have a beautiful list, you know, study from 2013, I believe, when the consent decree required us to have the, the feasibility, the feasibility study. study, and that lots of effort to get into that book. And my question still stands: Can you give me a list of the potholes? Which ones did we just fix? And it came off of the list. I, I may have expanded it by asking about the reduction in inflow and infiltration. It doesn't apply to this. It doesn't apply to when we camera, obviously, we don't produce inflow and infiltration. I understand that. But where's the, here's the list. Here's what we're trying to do. We've got those four done. Doesn't it make you feel good when you see we've got, we got these four things done? Well, and when I think our community is paying a lot of money. It would be nice if our community knew, what did we do with it? Well, unfortunately, you, the list is never done in these types of things, just like roads. Yes. Because we constantly are using them. They're constantly deteriorating because a lot of these systems were put into place 60, 70 years ago and nobody maintained them. So we're in the maintenance part of it, and as part of the contract, we do have all those maps. We have tracking sheets, and I'm sure you know, that's all available for what we put out to bid. Um, and and I, could, I could issue you reports, but they would be thousands of pages. Because even though right now we're doing, you know, this is the low-hanging fruit. What you're doing is just trying to be in compliance with your consent order. Because if you're not, there are fines to pay. Sure. So we identify the problems. And then we, obviously, you're supposed to budget for the problems you have and then correct them. So the way the system is set up, you're required to televise so much of your system each year. And then the next year, correct those defects. Right. Again, we're just into structural defects. We haven't gotten into the the other problems in the system, mm -hmm. which then, once we hopefully begin to turn the corner and get rid of kind of the big potholes and the large areas, there, there's portions of the um, the borough that they're still working on getting complete televising of to identify where those lines are. Mammals have been very um, especially on state roads, they came over the, the thousand page report that you're talking about, is it already prepared? It's in a database. Could you send it to us? Well, it's in a database that we could print out. Copy, don't need it printed. Whatever electronic method, maybe Excel, it would be nice to have and to see. Okay? It's that kind of thing. Well, we We're spending a lot of money, guys. I think it would be nice for us to know what we're doing. Now, I'm interested, I'm curious. I'm, I'm not asking for, for anyone to do anything more that is already existing, but it's nice to get the information. Lori. When we do, um, when we have a motion that says for you know, $40,000 $40, to uh, solar construction, I mean, I'm assuming they have a bill notes on it, because I've seen oh, okay. it. Yeah, so oh, yeah. can, can, can we just include that with the, you know, a note? Yeah. Never, so we read it off, you know, for what's completed. For what's completed in these areas. In so these areas. Payments. Yeah, so we can sit there and include, you know, yeah, you know added manhole covers on what's on the road, stuff like that. Okay. That way, yeah, that's, that's something that's, it's really not what I'm looking for. And by the way, I'm not questioning these bills at all. Okay, the quantities, the bills, you guys are doing all the job necessary to make sure that those quantities are accurate. That's not my point. We have a very, we have a lot of sores or roads that we can't see that have issues. It would be helpful if we understood, oh, they fixed less than that manholes. I know they did work on Bank Street because I saw it. Did a nice, you know, nice piece. They put a manhole there. It was very logical. All made a lot of sense. So I know that happened. Well, would you like us to then tell you where things like there is are? That's sort of yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do it with the information you already have. That'll burden you. Okay. We'll work on it. Okay.
Yes, Mike. Okay. You sound like a micromanager. You know, these gentlemen here have a manager. She does her job. You, you're putting such a burden. I don't want to know. I know they're getting done. There's a chain of man. You don't have to micromanage. No, I'm not trying to micromanage at all. And that's specifically what I, what I spent about 10 minutes trying to avoid was asking them to create more information. When she said she had a thousand page, whatever it was. What do you, what do you want a thousand page report for? Because that's what I thought she already had done. And it's whatever it is that they already have, I'm willing to work with it. I don't want you to spend any extra time or effort to send the raw data. Didn't you, didn't you a couple months ago pass? I mean, when you talk about this, then you issued, I mean, you, you knew what it was. No, we never, we, you had to have. You approved the money, you approved paying the money now, you had to approve the job a month or two months ago. Am I right? Am I right? Look in your, look in your notes from a couple months ago, Pat. You, you know what they're doing. Okay, I'm sorry. If it's there, continue. If it's there, I'd love to see it. Uh, we, we have a motion. It's been second. Yeah. Current estimate number one, 2015 CCD project. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. 2015 AVENT maintenance contract B for Fire Mill Road is advertised and publicly open on Monday, July 6, 2015 at 1 p.m. in the Council Chambers for the 2015 David maintenance contract B Fire Hill Road with the following date results. Uh, contractor T.A. Robinson, asphalt paving. Uh, daylight work bid was $68,736. Night work bid was $72,736. A Felino construction was $92,324. Night, night work bid was $90,124. Uh, Michael Pacciano, uh, contracting, daylight work bid was $97,185. Nighttime work bid was $97,185. Uh, motion of the Borough Council awarding the bid for the 2015 pavement maintenance contract B Barville Road to Lowe's Responsible Bidder, TA Robinson Asphalt Paving, the amount of um, we would decide whether or not we're going to do daylight or nighttime work. But, um, I think it's a right now, but it doesn't matter. Um, this, this I don't think they know until they get into it. Are you sure? There's a, these presents have to be available for the daylight? For, uh, in the environmental road, for the day. They were probably closed in June. It's up to the construction company if they use police or a flag or a flag. If they used us, they would hire us separately. I think there's one. Sometimes we'll just say. I mean, for the for the difference, four thousand dollars to do it tonight. Oh, it's kind of weird. And I would, I would, I mean, I would recommend doing it tonight. Anybody have a, anybody have an issue with some of the project tonight? Okay. So, um, we'll try to get this done before the end of the month. Low responsible bidder T A Robinson asphalt paving the amount of seventy two thousand. $736 for the night work bed contingent upon review of all documentation by the borough engineer. Yeah, this, we don't have to start this work immediately. There's some other issues with the wall on Bargo Road that we have to take a look at before we actually get into the road. So we want to make sure we get that squared up before this, before they come in. Approve the Bruce and Bill Colucci. 
All those in favor? Aye. It's okay to stop. All those opposed? Motion passes. Yes, just a comment on this. Yeah. Was, there was a good article on Barrio Road. Genocide says, look at this road. In 2013, this road was repaired. I think everyone is understanding that there is something wrong. We don't know what. There is something wrong. And it's, it's not just where the bumps are, or the, the, the bumps are. Wait, how many times have we, have we called cash? Uh, I would say probably at least four. So at least four times it's been called patch. Some of those recently, so the concept that it was a freeze and thaw during the winter has been, I'd say, ruled out. What's been ruled out is we are now entering Yeah, and it's longer than just those spots. It goes all the way, you know, pretty much the length of our railroad is, is, is degrading. And I, you know, I know that we, that we have a contractor that did the work two years ago. We had gateways that monitored the work two years ago. I really think that you ought to consider having someone come in and look at this that's independent of the contractor you're hiring, the contractor you had before, that is going to take a look at this and give you a report as to what's going on, preferably yeah. beforehand. If not afterwards, I mean, we're talking about seventy two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars of our money. We should at least know what happened. We may even find out that there's a bigger problem. So I'm suggesting we need you retain someone to do that. And we need to look into it. I mean, we're gonna we're meeting on they're gonna meet on Monday, right, to go over the next step for this. So that's something we need to talk about. Yes. This is one that we made in progress on finding out why we have that section of the road. Lori was looking at the minutes. We talked, yeah, well, I'm sorry, we, we did talk about uh, this earlier today. Um, it's always been our road. Always? Always been our road. Can we give it away? <laughs> yes, I like that idea. <laughs> Me too. I think PennDOT might take it. Yeah. We, it's for sale. Whoever wants it. You mean we'll pay some of the No, it's it's always been our road. We've gone back to what nineteen forty and it's been it's been our road ever since, yeah. Yes. This is a quick question. Um, do you look at all the bids when they come in? I'm sorry? Do you look at all the bids when they come in and or yes. you how come Felino happens to be two thousand dollars lower for night work versus I'm not sure Everybody knows. Knows. And then the other one is the yeah. same price for night and day. Yeah. When, can you just, that's Dennis Oregon. When, when you speak just so she knows what that's. I love that. I know. And I was just wondering, you know, how they calculate that. Yeah, I, I, I was curious myself. And you know, why is that? I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know why. I don't yeah, know how Felino you know, does their billing. Um, that's how they bill. I don't know about the shadow does. Everybody might send a package to us. Yeah, maybe it may be that reversed. I don't know. What's that? Bastiano and Polino are pretty large companies. They probably have all the generator plates and yeah. lights and all that stuff. In the house. So it's no big deal for them to do it. Yeah, well, all so they have that stuff. I don't know. Well, they might have to rent it and it costs more than the rent. Yeah. Yes. You guys just see the final numbers then? They don't send any sort of plan or anything? No, there's their sense of plan that they have to bid on, and then they have to bid on the individual plan. And so everyone has the same plan. But so there's no explanation as to where the difference in cost comes from. No, we don't want to have, you know, the hourly way might be different, you know, um, they might charge more for this than that. So but as far as the entire day, it, no explanation. Everything is yeah, it's straight down the board, so they're just costs are some of them are similar. They're getting the same bid package, the same plans to build. And the big packages they submit as much as the number to the entire package, like unit cost, total cost breakdowns, and all nine parts. And when they do the bid, they just talk about they open the sealed envelopes, the cost limitation, issue themselves as a bid bond. 
and from the numbers and they're all they're kind of all like the same test paper turned in. Can you do that publicly in front of the They're available. They're yeah. available. Yeah. Here. I mean, that's a tabulation sheet. Yeah, that's they actually sheet. submit as an entire package with a list of bases. Okay. Yeah, have you ever seen Yes. I just wanted to add that um, what was done in the work two years ago was just a mill and pave. So they just did the surfacing. And then this problem, which has been determined, is from the sub base and the drainage. So the road was not completely reconstructed two years ago. So the contractor that did that work was in importance. It wasn't with the contract. The problem wasn't the, the wearing surface. It's the material that we're needs. And that's to address. That's what this project is. And that's just the 30 seconds that Joe gave me. So he can speak more to that. But he wanted me to clarify. Um, we did go back to the contractor. They did have a warranty on the work. This was not with relation to um, the work that was previously performed. We kind of, you know, uh, I guess, didn't look at the deeper problems or realize that it was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right now, there's a lot of drainage issues going on, a lot of different things moving everywhere. Uh, water is moving a lot of different places right now. With it. So the water table needs to so high and you're right there next to the creek. So it's finding its way, and what this project will do is give it the, what it needs to get yeah, to where it needs to go. All right, uh, next. <clears throat> Cohen Law Group Cable Franchise Renewal Services. Uh, motion to Borough Council authorizing the original borough in conjunction with members of the Char West Cog to enter an agreement with the Cohen Law Group to perform cable franchise renewal services on behalf of the Bridgeville Borough for cost as described in the agreement. Uh, remarks, the franchise agreement does not, expire, does not expire until December 10th, 2017. The preliminary work, includes, including a cable compliance review, will begin as a portion of the scope of services. Costs will be determined by the number of municipalities that Participating in the program. Uh, Bruce, no second. And Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, bill list. <coughs> Motion to Borough Council approving the July 2015 bill list. So moved. Bruce no and Jason. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Payrolls. Motion of the Borough Council approving the payrolls of July 17, 24, 31, and August 7, 2015. So move Bruce and Jason. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Monthly reports. Motion to accept and pay any commission to the, two, the June 2015 real estate tax collector's report. So move. Bill, Anderson, and Jason. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the May 2015 financial report. Bruce and Jason. All those opposed? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the June 15 police report. So moved. So Bill Anderson and Bruce. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept June 15th zoning report. So move. Bruce, I mean Bill, and Jason. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Real estate tax refund. Motion of the Borough Council <coughs> approving the following real estate tax refund due to changes in the assessment as requested by the real estate tax collector. Uh, year 2014 lot block. 255-S-246 for the amount of $219.91 and year 2013 lot block 255-S-246 for the amount of $219.91 to William D. Connor and Robert D. Connor and then year 2014 lot block 322-G-278 for the amount of $168.71 to Ashley Maritz and for the total amount of $608.53.
to Bruce of second and Bill Henderson. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Now, quick question. How much, how many, how long is it going to take for all the real estate taxes to go through? I the real estate tax collector told me she's already getting the review uh reduced assessment for two months. So it's gonna still on still on. Still on. Gotcha. All right. Thanks. All right, committee reports. Bruce, no retration report. Uh Nino is not here for finance. Uh Parks and Rec. Um Jason Roof real quick uh the borough of VA all sort of thing this weekend. Whenever we ran it, they'll be able to finish all the games. Sounds good. Grass was good, everything. Thank you. Public Works, Bill Pelosi. Well, we've been in for a lot of different things to see what our public works guys can do. So we'll move to our next week. Yes, sir. Jerry is retiring. He's got to retire from the office. So, who should I say that? We're looking for a review button. We're asking for resumes. We'll be advertising for the place on it. For our worker, one of our guys retired this year or this month. So, we'll be advertising for a Public safety, so Henderson. Thanks, Tony. Um, it's been a public safety meeting uh, in lieu of a lot of the things that were brought up at the last council meeting. Um, first of all, we've continued to uh, restore police contract negotiations that's ongoing um, with the police department. Um, a couple of the issues we've left in committee, uh, we're still evaluating them. A couple of them there's been some activity on. One, the Ridge Road and the traffic, the truck traffic situation up there. Uh, we've had some uh, communication with Lori and Tom, the communication with some key players in, uh, from Upper St. Clair and that particular veteran operation. Um, we're continuing to enforce the ordinance that we have up there right now. Uh, we've also moved again to monitor since the communication has happened with those folks and believe that there's been a reduction in uh, the truck traffic that's going up there. I'd like to tell you, we actually shut it down this week. <laughs> But we can't take uh, we can't take credit for that. The, the roads actually closed. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But we're going to continue to monitor that uh, and continue to enforce it. Um, you know, as the ordinance reads. Uh, one of the other things we looked at in lieu of a comment that was made was the no turn on red coming out of Presley Road. Um, there's been a, a response uh, from PennDOT, um, and basically indicating that where that no stop or where that stop line is on Presley is back far enough to allow traffic traveling north on Washington Pike to make a left turn on Presley. That would make it a dangerous situation if we let that traffic come down to the foot of uh, Presley Road. So, you know, one of the things that the committee talked about was as we look at uh, what's going on in the south end of town, uh, how can we look at the north end of town and can make that a a better traffic situation up there. So proactively, we would like to engage in, in some discussions on what we can do on the north side, uh, on the north end of town, to make that a, an easier traffic thoroughfare as well. So, um, one of the things we talked about earlier, like an element that's a good time to bring up, was the possibility of having some concept of what it would look like and what we would need to do to do that. So that's what we talked about. And talk about our own. I think that's something we want to. Wait, do you need them to make a motion for you to come up with a concept? Yeah, I mean, we can do it that way and we can handle it after. You know, our conversations with Lori is probably end up there anyway. So, yeah. I mean, it just ultimately is going to depend on you know, what level you want to get to with it. Yeah. So, we can take it to a very extreme level or really certain for dollars like we've done that south end. Or we can very conceptual, you know, very it's you know, get the crayons out. It's, it's, it's to say, but try to identify something. Yeah, let's let's keep the concrete really slushy right now. Okay. And less costly. <laughs> Got it. You know, a picture that shows maybe the lanes, you know, what what ground would have to be taken. I think I think all I would want to do is 
maybe meet with some of you folks before I start jumping yeah, on Yeah, that's an option. So yeah. we get everybody to meet yeah, we Because I might have different ideas. Yeah, so uh, involve yeah, everybody. Hey, let us know when you're, when you're available. Yeah. <laughs> and the floor that wants to turn right, 
and you don't have it backing across the railroad tracks and across Commercial Street where our fire trucks can't get out if there's a fire, amongst other things. So that's the second discrete part. And I'm hopeful that both of those will be rather easy to, to see happen. The third piece was a request that public safety and, and no, um, and that was the thought about putting a dedicated left turn lane at Railroad Street. And that was the, the crux of what Laureate asked you to look at. Now, I don't know if you have an answer for any of those at this point. Yeah. So my, my initial answer on the, on the three lane, thirty foot board section of uh, Bob Rail from um, the difference between this section section of the road. So that, that section of the road, the way that it's crowned, the way that it drains on Washington Avenue, the pen up for this was is designed for those three lanes. Out here, uh, it's a little bit a little bit less uh, consistent from the from the standpoint of the cross section. So there are a lot of inlets that are low along the curves through this area where if we were to put in three lanes Current lane would be in the middle, would be forcing the majority of the traffic, which is through, up against the curb, into those inlets mm -hmm. and into those drainage areas. Um, to do something like that, in my opinion, would have been more than just putting data markings down. And that's kind of where, where I left it with Joe mm -hmm. between our discussions. Uh, if we wanted to get deeper into that, uh, we could, um, but we'd probably be looking at some, some adjustments to the inlets. Um, some curb repairs, the utilities that are too close to the clear zone, um, there are things like that we have to look at. It. it was a little bit more in, in depth than just him putting the data markings down, and that was more of my conversation with Joe before he left. Um, do we want to go further and get deeper into issues or non issues or things that would have to be addressed? That's certainly something that we can do. Um, there were some issues with the transitioning between that section and where it does open up mm -hmm. to the Washington. Wider lanes in that area. So you have certain lengths that are required to transition through lanes based on the speed limit. So you have, you have some level of transition that has to happen. Where does that end? Where does it begin? How does it tie in? How does it all work together? So Those were the very questions I was hoping you would look at. Okay. <laughs> is is there some some thought from council that would be good for him to look at that? What you got? My gut feeling was that. The issue you'll create by pushing those two lanes to the curb are much different than what you have with the three lanes on Washington Avenue because of danger. danger. Potentially, I think. Yeah, I'm saying pedestrian as far as pushing seagulls to jump the curb. You have a real small curb on the street. You know, right. And bigger curbs here. The big issue for me was the was the inlets. So you're now, you know, you're, you're all of those people now. The green. And, 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 my, and, and honestly, you know, your minimum lane for any type of, a, let's say, let's call it a newly designed road. So a lot of the stuff we're trying to write. Right. Right. Um, if I were going to design a road, the minimum lane would be really going to have is 10 feet. So while we have 30 feet, you lose effective width with your paper. So your double yellow lines from edge to edge are a foot. So you're losing a foot there. And then you're solving <coughs> Taking 30 feet, you lose two, so you effectively have 28 feet, so you have about a nine foot, nine and a quarter, nine and a half foot lane, which certainly is desirable um, unless you have really extremely low traffic volume, like 400 cars in a day or less if you don't have it. So, kind of combined with all those things, is, you know, my gut feeling was that I think it would create more issues that it would solve, but that's not to say that you know, it's like a lot of things. Not to say it would work. Now, down at the, at the railroad, it's much wider down there. Um, but you also still have an issue of, of the transition. Uh, my, my gut on that one is if you do have some room to put in an exclusive up turn on the onto uh, on the railroad street. Uh, the issue that I want to have looked at is by pushing two things happen. By 
pushing that double yellow towards the railroad street for that left turn. When you come out of railroad street right now, uh, two lanes are there. You you have to come up a, a, a certain amount to see beyond the guide rail over the tracks. And I believe that once you get to that point, you that if you push that double yellow this way, you would be squeezing that through movement, you know, going away from the Washington Avenue. And similarly, even if we had enough room, I would say we can get that in. By pushing them closer to the curb into the, uh, what we call the 90 degree turn, on the, you know, the say on the Bower Hill, but that sidewalk in the curb that juts out right there, you need to be out much further towards the north to make that turn, especially for you know, heavy vehicles, trucks, and things like that. So I don't even know do a passenger car, but I'm not so much worried about the passenger car, I'm more concerned about the bigger vehicle. So for us, to lay something out there. I think we can get something that would fit, but it's going to create some other issues. And we want to make sure we have a strong panel on before we say, you know, conceptually, yeah, it looks like it works, but then we don't want to do it in that situation where people coming out of railroad street are now right up against the vehicles that are going eastbound, be able to see, and then people that are going eastbound, we want to put them so far to the side that they've got to swing out to stay on the power rail anyways. So that's in the last people piece. People curb lane coming the route with people with a dedicated lane to the left, you're creating a hazard because some when you go to pull out of Railroad Street, you can't always see what's coming along the right. side of it. And, I mean, other than controlling the light. You know. And I think that a lot of people, there's room there now that the people who are turning left, you know, they're fighting with that we have a little bit more passing it anyways. It's just not full. Um, you know, you, you may create a situation in which like, we're talking about it. The friendly, uh, friendly driver, the left turn. Exactly. He may wave the guy out the turn left. The guy who's turning left might not realize that now mm -hmm. this guy going this guy has their own we've, lane. Those, those are very we've, we've, yes. we've, yes. we've created a lot of building yeah. in, that, in that situation because now you said, okay, you can make a left hand turn. The other ones can pass on the outside, and then you're or else giving permission. Now they're just taking it on around and doing it. If we choose not to do anything there, we need to define that area much better because people assume that they can pass along the coming off of our road and passing there, and it's creating a safety issue. Well, so that's that's exactly the, the point. The, the do nothing option is really we need to do something. <clears throat> something needs to be to be done there. Um, and, Actually, it's exactly the kind of response that Frank was giving. You know, I was, I was hoping to so look at the pros and cons of each of those three areas, and then maybe making a decision as to let's yeah, they making come, a hard decision. So they, they come down to what, what is your, what is your primary? What do you want? Do you want to make it a little bit easier during the peak times to reduce the congestion a little bit, or do you want to? Keep it a little bit uh, more traffic calming, if you will, by not having that type of situation. So, you know, similar to almost the Washington Avenue board. So, we could put, you know, you could you could do a lot of things. You could move utilities, you could buy right away, you could put a four lane road through Washington Avenue. But that's not going to have what you want in the community. It's going to make traffic move through faster. Yeah. But you don't want traffic to move through faster. No. So, you kind of have to balance those things. And stuff. But what is the, what's the priority, and what can we do to? Maximize what we have um, without negatively impacting the project at all. And you want it to be enough of a deterrent. See, people are coming through, it's just going to be for sure. But it's still enough of a deterrent that not everybody's going to. You don't want to invite everybody who's already avoiding it to use it. Avoiding, uh, 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 avoiding Washington Avenue as a, to get from one end uh, to the other without being from where we're staying here. I, I, wish, I wish the theory of let's make it miserable enough and they won't come through here, would work. But we've tried that for about 30 years. Make it miserable enough that they, people outside our town, won't come through. What we've ended up with is, it really is miserable, mainly on our own citizens. We're the ones that, we don't have a way around it. We've got to live with it. We've got to come through this, this piece. So, 
On our arterial roadways, I would, I would think that we would want to make it as convenient for our citizens as we can within, you know, within our own safety, but as convenient for our citizens. To speak of the left turn, I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know can do that. Uh, I understand Pat Hunt's initial response to say, I don't, you know, I'm not sure why you can have it three times. You know, that's our road. But I think there's enough time in that signal that you could, could give it in advance so that the, the, the side of it would get, you know, you have a new, a new head out there, you know, a five second head, they would get it in advance. It's, it's already up there. Oh, well then, what's the, I thought that's what you were asking. Well, it's I can answer that. Work. It's not working? Eric, no, I can answer that. that. Hey. That, that might be the arrow's up for, for us. Just for emergency vehicle ramp. But that F10 arrow, that hasn't been used for 18 years since we've been in the building. Yeah. So what we're talking about. So you about can take that system down. So you're, but you're talking about making that functional change. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mike, when you talk about making it more difficult for those who are cutting through our town, the people that are coming down Murray and going on to Bowery Hill, I. Those of you who are in Bridgeville that are doing it, I understand. <laughs> but the bulk of that traffic that we would disadvantage by putting a left turn are people that are just really coming to a neighborhood that they shouldn't be coming through. They should be going down the rest of So I, I do recognize that our own citizens do this. I would say that if you do it within the, you do it within the, the, the parameters of what that's the site length, that signal running at now, mm -hmm. I, would, I would argue that you can do it. Side streets are yours. So if you want to take the total time that's on the side streets and give it up a different way, I can get that to happen. I don't have to press it, I can't hear it. Council at the last meeting asked, said yes, they wanted the left turn. Right. You're telling me you can make, you can make it happen. You know, we've been asking for a while. Frank, Sometimes. Frank's been telling me. Good. You, as long as you said the demonstration that we're not met, we're not going to mess around with no. We don't want to. We don't want to do that. So where that we're talking about is is an impediment to the Murray Avenue side. Mm -hmm. so, that's fine. It, 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 it really is an impediment uh, during during rush hour. And it's in the garage area. We have mine here at 4 30. If three vehicles get through that light, we're lucky. And sometimes just be just to it. I mean, it, it really is. Now, what the last one? See, it's been to make a call and say, hey, we want to do this. It's easy to think of it. Like, hey, don't mess right. with it. Now, what they'll probably ask for is some level of what's the traffic there now? How many people are coming out of this side? How many are turning left? And, and what is it? What is it operating at now from a capacity house standpoint and what's it going to operate at? So I, there may be some small level of a little bit of data collection, a little bit of analysis that we want to see, but I think if we can demonstrate that it's not going to mess up with things actually going to be a benefit because this is probably the heaviest traffic side. It is. Um, I think we show that. If we show that to them and we show them we're not going to take any time away from us. Yeah, we want to see it. Yes, to look at things on Barrio. Okay. I can. I mean, I can, it can just be look at Barrio between um, Railroad and, and, and Washington. Yeah, Washington based on our yeah. discussions tonight. Yes. Right. Kind of, you know, I'll look at it all. That's a, that's a that gets us to the south end, and the plan for the south end. And again, since you are here. <laughs> Um, the question on the concept plan. There are there's a, there, there are two issues. There are a number, but there are two issues that seem to have been brought up at pretty much the last number of council meetings by Mr. Fryer on the two lanes into Bridgeville, two lanes out of South Fayette and the stacking lanes being extended down beyond McDonald's so that there is a smoother flow. And 
and uh, from everything. I'm not a traffic engineer, so I look at it and it seems logical that if you're going to have people coming, you know, if you're going to have people stacking, they're going to need a longer stacking line past that point. But I notice the conceptual plans continue not to show that. I was wondering if we could get the plans to show that. So a couple, so a couple things happen. Um, just to, can I just kind of update everyone where we're at? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, a significant amount of work has been done on behalf of the task force um, with PennDOT. Put some plans together that, that we felt we're going to give us our best shot at having something actually done in our lifetime. So that's where we can kind of end up at this point. So we met last Wednesday with PennDOT, the district executive. Um, we're trying to find a little more information out about funding. Unfortunately, they couldn't tell us for sure where funding is going to come from or how much mm -hmm. this is a budget, a state budget yet. Um, but we've got a lot of positive vibes from where we're at and what we've done. They were very positive about everything that we've done to take this event for them. So thank us for the level of thought and engineering that was put into things that we on it and put this out and other things like this. It's make it very easy for them to go to Harrisburg and to meet with the appropriate people in Harrisburg and to be able to say, this wasn't done with Crayon, we had to realize what was happening here. The biggest limitation on having anything done now is right. The reason you're not seeing anything beyond, uh, say, the get going on Drive is there's no right of it. So once we, if we're basically what's going to happen there, where those curves are going to end up, are going to be inches from the right. Once you go outside those inches into uh, the tail crack of development, into the McDonald's, into the get go, the Med Express on the other side, you're essentially Put a giant stick in the scope of possibly having any because, um, and if you shut off those access points, it would be a long time before anything can be done. That is the issue. The issue is, is that the McDonald's and the get go and those guys have their turn lanes, they have their permits, and they have their access. Um, if anybody, and not or anybody, were to, were to close out all the project, you can guarantee that. Anything will be held as long as possible by those. Are they saying they don't, they say absolutely don't touch our Or yeah. Yeah. it's just not going to happen. I mean, when we, when we met with Pendle, they said things like, and that's what the McDonald's access, you're buying the McDonald's at $4 million. We're talking about a project based right. on the plans that we have that's in the $5 million range. Yeah. You're talking about just the McDonald's. You know, you're, you're buying basically sure. what Pendle said. They said, don't even go outside of that right away. Go outside of that right away. Then, Get on the TIF, and yes, the 12 year plan from SPC, and have it show up on there for a long time, and then hopefully sometime find it. I mean, we're really on the class road. I think having the right amount of money from the right amount of sources, with the probably, hopefully, the smallest amount of local dollars, to get a really huge tangible improvement out there. Um, they could have a major benefit to bridge over to that water change. Now, is it something where you're going to go down through there during the key times and you're not going to see a car and you're going to fly right through and draw an offset and you're going But you're, you're not even close to doing it now. When you're talking about uh, a dozen to 15 minutes just to get from 79 into the bridge. So but what we are talking about are significant capacity improvements, um, significant improvements in signals from, from a dollar standpoint. Grant monies that we've applied for, we've applied for several grants, uh, up to $1.2 million worth of grants that they can't award those grants until there's a budget. But we also know that not a lot of people have applied for these grants and there's a, there's a piece amount of money in them, so we're getting the feeling that if you apply for it, you get it. Um, so we think there's, a, there's, there's some definite merit in getting something done. But, but one story I keep telling is that in 2007, when I was my previous firm, I did the original study showing that the improvements need to be done at first in line in 2007. The study was, was reviewed by Pennon, and they said, yeah, we agree, let's, let's figure out how to get this funded and design. 
2015. That's just a turn lane the signal. That's we're talking about widening bridges and retrofitting in traffic signals and put turn lanes in. And we're talking about a major project. If we want to have something happen, you know, in, in, in real time, and have a huge benefit from it, I think we're really on the path. I think we're on that path. Are there things that can change? Here's the thing: it's a concept. So we're this is a this is a concept. Um, it's not based on any real hard survey or anything. That all has to happen. But it's enough that everybody's data to find where we can find it. PennDOT's committed. PennDOT has all kinds of different things that they different funds they can get into. Um, and that's what they're doing. So I think once we get budget, we'll know that in a couple of months what the funding's going to be. Once we have that funding, then we can get into the hard work engineering and design. And if there's places where things can be changed in the concept, I mean, we're, we're putting together a concept for $5 million for improvements for $10,000 to a level to a level that's been so sad, so, so acceptable in the department that they're, you know, that they're, every time we meet them, they're, they're thanking us because it's making it so easy because they save money. That is, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't right. Right. So yeah. that will all be fine too. Hey, you know what, we think, this, what if we do this here instead of that there? Absolutely. We'll look all of it. Are you aware of the business owners that um, expressed an interest in donating? Um, you know, I know, I know Joe has talked to, at least made contact, or tried to make contact with him on Friday, so we can be right away from them. But, like yeah. I said in our previous meetings, it seems someone planned that right because there's a big group of harassers yeah. that are trying for that. That's a different, that's what you mean just to do what you show up. I'm talking about the, the area from BP, Mad Express, back to Daniel, Daniel Drive, where you're saying, hey, we're ready to the turn. You start talking about taking right away as an access, we've got an issue of like, them coming back at us. Um, I've, I've heard from the very owners that they are interested in possibly donating right away. That they see the merit. That's express. Don't know about Med Express. BP was there. Don't know about McDonald's. We know about um, what's his name, uh, Dale Greco. Dale Greco was yeah. very positive for donating right away from. Well, Dale was part of all the That's right. And, and am I incorrect in my that he is yeah. only yeah. part of the town? Yeah. The issue there, on, and it's not even just the right, even if McDonald's said it's the left turn. Well, even, not, not even just that. Even if, even if McDonald's said, well, you know, we're interested in being able to right. So right now, we have the curve, which is a very little bit wide on that side. But they have their, their one way loop around the front of the store. From that curve up to that loop, it's a, it's a tangible vertical difference. So even if they said, we're going to give you some right away on the front of the me to be able to put a lane in there. They're gone. You know what I mean? You lose, they lose their circulation. They now have just a U around it. You can't get around. So you're either tearing the building down, you're rebuilding it, turning it back, or you're buying the product. It's both wrong. But you don't necessarily have to be getting frontage from them. See, I don't know the detail. Do yes, Bob. Do you to it's not uh, like my, I, I, I met Mike briefly when it was Sunday. We sort of went I just want to mention something since you guys are talking about some things that I've researched very carefully. Uh, the, uh, I was able to show the members of council that I guess the latest version of the task force plan at the last meeting. I don't know how they feel about it, but I was not happy with the fact that most of the traffic flow was designed for East Coast Movement across Washington Avenue. You know, down on short tier street, the additional lane over the back. But uh, we're primarily, or I'm primarily interested in speaking from the businessmen in South Avenue. Pat and the mayor and I have met with twice already. We're really concerned about the traffic flow north and south in Washington. Uh, obviously, we'd like to have four lanes go from the bridge, which I understand now might be six. Or more lands, all the way up past 
first step. I, I, it's possible. But some of the things that you mentioned, I think it's just a matter that you, you probably haven't looked into as carefully as some of us have. Yeah. We, we approached police and uh, the BP gas station people. And we talked to, uh, I talked to Bill Burton, but he's the one who runs the Napa and the Med Express property. And uh, the police and BP said <coughs> not only did they would give them the property to add that additional lane there, but they said that they might contribute to actually paying for the the actual additional uh, the additional road. And also, Colusi said the same thing. Um, Harvey, the, the King's Restaurant said the same thing. And uh, I talked to the tax economist there, but I think that he's been, his property's been purchased by Burska uh, recently. But what I'm getting at is, I think uh, by taking such a conservative perspective, by being satisfied with what you're proposing, I think, is a mistake. I think if, 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 if we as a community and you as one of our representatives is going to approach PennDOT and other funding sources to pay for this, and we know how tight money is, we, I would suggest, and the business owners, and the majority of the business owners in South Bay suggest, that includes the largest business there, proposing, that we propose the additional money from the bridge up to at least the traffic light at the uh, uh, Daniel yeah, Daniel's right. I might mention this to you. Mike Mike <coughs> Benton, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Benton and I actually walked the property with the tape measure on both sides of the road. And you're right, in front of the models, it would be a squeeze, but they will not lose their loop around. The loop around right now the width of the loop around is 16 feet by just reducing it I think two or three feet, that would still be possible. Let me just, I don't want to take up your time here, but I, I think it's really, uh, this effort to get Washington Avenue made four lanes part of the way through the South Bay Business District to connect with the section that's four lanes of Ridgewell for the present. This, we made this attempt 25 years ago, and it was shot down primarily just to be the history. And I said, no, we aren't going to build the four lanes through there because we're going to build another interchange at the west end of Boyce Road, and that'll, that way there won't be a traffic problem in the Well, as you know, the interchange was never built. It would have been paralyzed, excuse me, it would have been paralyzed in this traffic for that period of time, and that's why uh, the, our efforts are uh, very intense to try to be less than concerned. But some of the, 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 the some of the obstacles you're mentioning about right away, uh, some of the several several four or five of the people have committed to it. Matter of fact, I mentioned to Dan Cessna a year ago. Uh, I can describe this some of these this cooperative attitude. Some of the guys when I asked them if they are willing to actually not only donate property but to pay for it. Excuse me. One time, so I just want to make one more point. Cessna said that there was a, a, a department in Harrisburg that would loan money to those property owners for 30 years and then we up percent interest. Which is really, I mean, I think we should look at some of those things. It would be great if you didn't do this along that way. I got to get into things. My kind of recommendation is, um, you know, we were obviously in conversations with South Bay a lot. Next time we talk to him, we'll have him, we'll have him confirm what Bob's saying. It is true that um, these people are going to give up right away. Um, you know, if that's the case, then we have see if we can a lot of people. I would ask the people, I'm sorry, if you're willing to do that, place that kind of thing. Right. right. And frankly, yeah. I mean, it's not rocket science for the past future. There's no secret. That four lanes is somewhere right. that's going to need It's like saying, you know, it's like asking yeah. a business owner in Britain, well, would you like traffic solved, problem solved? Yes. Well, therefore, having us do that, you know, that 
you know, the same that you. But, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. You're, you're, it, it's no trade secret that everybody knows for years that eventually in the future you need to have four lanes coming through there. But your, I think your comment tonight was you don't want that issue to get stuck to our leg like tar in the concepts of trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve here. No. I would assume Safayette has been attempting to and has a relationship with their own business community right down there for years, and certainly they would be more desirous than anybody of achieving those right way corridors. And their business owners are saying, representing that they're willing to donate free right of way easements to that daughter in the township, and I would think they'd be willing to put that writing and hand that to Safayette or who can hand it to Pen Dog. Excuse me, that would be great, but they need a plan first. I think, they, 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 I think conceptually, they the concept but really conceptually I think that frankly to start the ball rolling, I think folks would find it satisfactory to get the ball rolling if somebody said conceptually, depending upon what the plan may be, I would be willing to donate some degree of right away my frontage towards that cost. Well, that, I think that's a good suggestion, Mike. Matter of fact, uh, many of them have done it already. I might mention one thing. Someone um, mentioned Met Express or uh, Burbinder. Burbinder didn't say that he would give his give the property. He didn't say that he would contribute money toward paying for that extra land. But what he did say was he'll do anything to increase the value of his property. However, Galice, BP gas station, Calusi, and Kings all already have definitely said that they would do that. And they, they put nothing in writing and I didn't ask them. But they're very, they're very, this is a, this is a possibility that we should investigate. And I think it is time that we ask them in writing. Because it puts everybody into the, into the mix. Well, that's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. They sit there and talk to a business owner and they say, oh, I don't want my traffic. Sure. Probably, you know, solved in front of my business. That's one thing to say it. Mm -hmm. You know, but whenever push comes to shove, all right, it's going to be this, this, and, and that. Well, I don't know. If it's, you do that. it's getting to be time, as push comes to shove, that it's time for a little bit more than just words. It's time for written. If, if, and I would think that those folks would be most appropriately approached with soft face, yeah, with that's what I'm saying. And yeah. Maybe in coordination. Well, we the, the, the biggest going to come back down to that left turn access sure. to the inside. Mm -hmm. So if, if we. And South Fair fully recognizes that what wants to be out there is, you know, they're putting in this the two left turn lanes from northbound Washington Park to turn on to here. Now, the, the leftmost left turn lane is not very long. Okay. So the way that it was designed was they, they had their pinch points, which is the right of way, they had the left turns they had to maintain into the into the uh, Met express side, into the McDonald's, into the Gecko, they had to maintain those things. So they put in as long as a left turn lane they could which, it's not long enough. Mm -hmm. Everybody recognizes it, depend on everybody. The issue becomes if you want to make that those two left turn lanes as long as they want to be, they may they, they may end up being 1,500, 2,000 feet long, if not longer. That's all of those properties. Every single property on either side of that road, they're talking about right away. And yeah, we'd like an extra lane. They suddenly have lost the ability to turn left in and left out of their development. Suddenly, the I'll give you the right away becomes don't come near my right away. Sorry. That just was our opinion based on candid conversation with South Bay. Candid conversation with Pendot. Pendot said, You're going to come in here with a plan that's going to require a whole bunch of right away, a whole bunch of utility relocations. We can't promise anything with no idea where funding's going to come from. Go talk to SBC and get on the tip. So we've tried. So there is a, there is a rendering mm -hmm. that PV Scheffler did showing. Hey, here's here's this grandiose color, you know, five lane section all the way, all way right. down through there. That's something that's a good enough level to maybe get on the tip and to get into the conversation. But when it comes down to like a real time, real dollars, what can we get that now? I mean, we're we're yeah. there. We're, yeah. we're at the point now where we're we're gonna you know by the end of this year we're gonna have a filled pot of money from multiple sources and we're gonna we're gonna allocate that as best we can. Again, this hasn't been final engineered. Sure, we did look at ourselves in that area. And it is in South Fayette, and it has been fully blocked with Mike Benton and everybody in South Fayette. Now, can we show something? We can start to put lines on paper, show some hashed out areas. Hey, we need 15 feet of right away from you. We need your, your lane to turn around. But it all, it all has to tie together. It all has to, the lanes have to line up. So we can't start over here 
and then say, as soon as we get to the McDonald's, we're going to push everything that way. Comes down to that transition. I got to have one foot for every 35 feet. We need transmission transition lane. If I'm going to transition 10 feet, I need 350 feet of transition. I can't just say right here. I'm just going to move over 10 feet. Everything has to work geometrically. Those are all the conversations we have. And when you look at that, if you've got the yeah, here's what it needs to be to get this, and we get property owners that say yeah, 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 then we got it. And if we got people that say no, then we don't. I certainly don't want to miss this opportunity, which is a very precious moment, where Newberry, Bridgeville, Southfield, where all our stars align. I don't want to miss that moment to try and get something too big. Uh, but if if we can get all those property owners, no, you, you're not going to fix that. But we're doing the, we're doing the same kind of, try, of attempt with Whitehead here in Bridgeville. We're trying to get them to donate. It's the same approach in Southfield. And I think it's worthy of just asking. If well, I say no, then we go back to what's on the on the drawing board and the shorter lanes, and that's what it is. Yeah. What I would say is we have that concept. Of yeah. Yeah. Um, and 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 they they all we have to do is throw that over top of there. We we develop what we get from there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you yeah. know we got tight in this area, but we so we expanded it and, and, and made everything fit in. So we could show those lines on there, but but their rendering that, that show mm -hmm. what you're talking about. That lane coming northbound on Washington Pike, the rightmost through lane, the line up with the rightmost bridge lane, was shown right over top of the right over top of the lane that goes in front of McDonald's. So it's not as easy as just saying, well, we'll just push it over this way because we've got three or four feet to work with. I need to be 12 feet over mm -hmm. when the lanes work. So we have that concept. We can take the, those colored renderings that, that, and, and show the area behind it and go to McDonald's and say, what do you think? Since you might, I might mention something to you and the other fellows. Uh, Mike Benton and Ryan and, and I, not that I'm in that category, have had great difficulty even talking to the McDonald's people about the, the fact of eliminating that left turn stacking lane and give them, giving them a new access going straight their head through. As a matter of fact, Mike and Ryan stopped over unannounced, I think once or twice, to try to catch. Uh, with the rice people there and they failed, I did the same thing. They just don't want to talk. The reason I'm mentioning this is the left turn into a fast food restaurant shouldn't stop the widening of the major regional connecting road going through Bridgeville and Safayel. That's That would be more close to absurd. And as Pat's suggesting, and I'm, I'm sure he's not the only one, we need a plan that shows the four lane from someone like you, so that we know the cost estimates, so that we can approach these people who have tentatively said, well, well, we'll give you the property. And uh, Mike's right. They can put it in writing. Yeah, and uh, they, they, when I mentioned the 30-year the, the, uh, program or a payment, they, it's the same thing. They said, well, we aren't going to give you, put it in writing, but they'll consider it. I think a, a, an approach should be made. We need the drawings to get the cost estimates to make it. Thanks, Mike. Well, is that what you're saying? You want you want us to pay to have him design something in South Bay? No, it's they're all working task together. force. So it's all it's just task force. Yeah, yeah, they're all working together. It's a very yeah, topic it's because it's, we're not we're not putting any money on. No, I mean the, the, right now it just I mean, there's been conceptual drawings done. Right, right. That's and at this point it's just us going to be. Okay. We're not spending, you know. And probably when you talked about the PB Scheffler, that was Safayette's person. Yeah. Safayette puts him in. With this, like, do you know the, the pot that we're talking about? How big is it? I'm going to We're open for like five and a half million. Is that including the Newberry money? That is, that's, yeah. that's the pot that I thought of. So this whole thing, including the bridge, about five and a half million. I had some, somebody told me some really crazy number. Like, well, there was, well, there was like a $30 million number running around, but yeah. that, was the, that was to go from uh, uh, the boys' okay. road, okay. four lanes, second home. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's that was the number of, we, we have X number of feet times a million dollars a mile per lane. I heard that one too. It meant nothing. Yeah. Okay, so that meant nothing. That number meant nothing. It doesn't belong no. in the equation. Oh, that was a chef number. Um, uh, that gets, <laughs> but then it's the $4 million by McDonald's. 
you would take it to your committee yeah. to, to review it and go over it this month. Before, before, sure. yeah, so, before we do before we go approving any more money. Yeah, let's look at our overall of what we're trying to do and accomplish. And, uh, and so we can do it. We at least got to start and we can work it. But, uh, well, we want to lose money and close with your hands. Yeah. And, uh, under planning your 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 yeah. your committee yeah. to, to get together and uh, okay. as far as con it's, and that's uh, all council to to review it and come back with uh, some recommendations. That would be my sure. suggestion. Anything else? Yes, sir. That's the report. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Engineer, Engineer General Mike. Um, just to, other than what was on the agenda tonight, I want to touch base on the 2015 pavement maintenance program. Uh, they're actually waiting until uh, Penn American has completed their uh, waterline replacements and their restoration to go in and have a meeting with El Grande uh, to set up the schedule for that. So we're working with the utilities to let them do their work first so they can come back in and, uh, and complete the, the, the paving. Um, just to skip around a little, like I said, some of these are already on the agenda. Uh, the New York Storm Sewer, we're working on the design. Once we've analyzed the design and what needs to be done there, we'll come up with some cost estimates and then we'll bring that to council to discuss that in a little more detail. Um, the ADA door openers for the municipal building um, were reviewed. The equipment was received and they're, they're scheduling. Uh, I believe they have a pre-construction meeting. So they'll... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, they're waiting for the equipment to come in and then we'll schedule that to install. So. Um, Washington and James development, nothing new on that. Uh, Chartier's Creek stream bank sta stabilization, there's nothing new to report. And um, and Mike already covered the Washington Avenue and Chartier Street um, meeting with Penn Rock on July. Thank you very much. Uh, Southbridge, Dan? No report. Thank you. Uh, Becky's not here for the library. Oh, I'm sorry. He's got a paper. Bill? Joe, fire chief. Chief report. I'm sorry, Bill. I'm sorry, I went right past you. Um, you guys got my report I gave you on the fire calls last two months, and I gave you a six, six month report. The only other thing I have is what's sitting in front of Lori that was shipped to us today from Pierce. Um, I will re what I'm going to do to this report. Because of who won it, I'm going to turn this over to Mike and Bruce. You can explain what you guys see because if I explain it, it's not the same. But if you guys are outside the fire department, you know how we feel about it. I mean, you guys got to go up to the factory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that after last meeting, the next morning, Mike and I flew to Appleton, Wisconsin to uh, go to help with the fire department to go over the new fire truck. We spent two days on a punch list and went through the demonstrations of it. Uh, even though they had, and they took us through a complete tour of the, the plants, the manufacturing of it, and the assembly of it. And it, it, it was amazing. The quality control that they have in place, we still found about 50 things wrong, which they went all over everything. Uh, it, and you got it back in the list. Oh, they, they fixed everything that we found. It wasn't big things, but it was little things that could become problems. Um, it is a beautiful piece of equipment. It's very well done. And um, it, I was reluctant in going and spending two days away from my business to do it. But um, once I was there and went through everything, I was glad I did because it uh, gives you more appreciative uh, this for, the, uh, for the fire truck and the fire department. So. I mean, I asked you a question up there, and it was kind of interesting, and everybody here knows what that truck cost. I mean, it was a million dollars. Yes, that's a very lot of money for a piece of equipment. And I asked Bruce that when he was up there, and his answer was, he can understand why now. Yeah. Well, ours wasn't the most expensive. There was no. more other expensive. There was more ones, ones but yeah. you see what goes in place to understand why there's so much. Uh, it's, you know, you got you have an apparatus that's going to it's going to service this community for the next 25 30 years. Twenty five years, twenty to thirty years, twenty five to thirty years is what that truck was designed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's designed. Uh, I mean, it's a piece. It's an apparatus that's going to service this community well, and uh, you know, it's something to be proud of. It really is. Yeah, but again, from the fire department, thanks to you guys, 
to make this work. And we do, we very appreciate it. And I know we've got a lot of good receptive back throughout the town of people that you guys have done this for us. So one of the neat things was is that the rescue that was next to it when we went through when we were in the garage going through everything. Um, those guys it didn't cost them anything out of their taxpayer money. Somebody donated $3 million to the, to the fire company. And they were able to buy a, a rescue uh, equipment and remodel their fire station and everything. So it, that's something always to be looking at too, is people looking for giving or, or you know. Yes. Uh, like, um, I can tell you, just in my, in my professional career, because I deal with firemen every day, and you know we have a volunteer fire department and there's many many small communities the size of bridgeville that their fire departments are not volunteer um, you know they can't find the people to, to do it so they just pay, they put it on a tax and they pay their fire department so you know we're very appreciative to what these guys do thank you and the neat thing was the salesman for the fire truck uh, i went to kindergarten with <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he's from Bridgeville. He, he, he lives in Canada. He's, he's from Bridgeville. He lives in Canisburg. His dad was a former police chief. Policeman. He was captain, yeah. Okay. So him and his brother, we went to school together. So it, was, it was pretty, it was, it was really a good time but, uh, for for all of us, for the fire department and that time. Council, so. Thank you. Uh, for a man or boy. Um, I, I provide a number of things. Okay, All right. Old business. Thank you very much. 